Life Metropolitan Community Church on this Sunday morning. Today it's known as Trinity Sunday. It's also the first Sunday after Pentecost and the first Sunday of Pride Tide. So after, after our gathering call and gathering call response, which you have either uploaded on Facebook or in your email, you can join us at home if you'd like. Uh, we're going to light the candles of the Holy Trinity on the altar. Also, the candles for our community as we celebrate Pride Tide today. Would you join us for our gathering call? Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Alaba alma mia al Señor y no avides ninguno de sus beneficios. Praise the Lord who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desire with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. El Señor hace justicia y defiende a todos los oprimidos. I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord, because you are called an outcast for whom no one cares. Yo te restauraré y sanaré tus heridas, afirma el Señor, porque te han llamado de la deseado la que a nadie la importa. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. I trust in you, Lord, I say. You are my God. My times are in your hands. May God bless this reading in the Holy Scriptures as we sing together. Let's have one for me, Lord Jesus. Let's have one for me, Lord Jesus. Let's have one for me, services 
and Mercy Chefs continues throughout this month. We're seeing anywhere from 40 to 50 individuals and families every week showing up curbside at our parking lot. The meals have been really fabulous and the folks seem very appreciative. If you want to come and help and volunteer, help out in handing out those meals, we don't ask any questions except, hey, how many folks do you need meals for? How many are you trying to feed? And providing that we are asking all of our volunteers to mask and to glove when you're on site here. And we're just very thankful for all those who make that possible, both that program, our Meals to Go regular program, and building up our meal reserve just to help folks in the church and the community. So many wonderful ways that God is still working in spite of everything going on. We know we are still called for this time. In this moment, we want to uh, take a moment before we begin worship. Uh, I have a rule of thumb that if I try to remember birthdays, I'm up a creek if I miss one person. However, if someone crosses that mark of 80 or higher, we will take time during worship to recognize today or not today, but Tuesday is actually Ms. Vera Solomon's 92nd birthday. That's Phyllis's mom. Actually, Phyllis's birthday, I think, is tomorrow. Phyllis, we won't tell your age, but your mom, we have permission to tell her. We're going to call Miss Vera right now. Hello. Hey, Miss Vera? Hello. Yes, this is Mark at New Life Church. Congratulations. And I understand, I understand that you have a birthday on Tuesday. Another one. All right. Well, we are excited to be able to just celebrate that with you, and we love you, and we want you to know that you're thought of, and we are holding you in our heart. We'd like to sing happy birthday early to you, if that's okay. It was that's so nice. All right, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. so much to keep us stressed and as we gather in worship today yes we would love to be in person and hugging and kissing like we always used to be able to do but for right now we're just thankful that we can connect via live stream on Facebook live and on zoom through the week and knowing and praying that one day maybe we'll be able to get back together but we want to make sure before we do that we can do so in a safe or safer way for as much as possible so thank you for your continued patience thank you for continuing to support the ministries of new life mcc because we didn't close we may not have been able to meet in this house but we're still the church and we're still about making a difference in christ's name amen, amen. let's pray again gracious and merciful god today we gather in worship in all kinds of ways today we gather in worship when we hold so much in our hearts and minds our spirits sometimes it's hard to even find rest but we claim your presence and your promises for this day and for all the days ahead and all God's people said Amen. Amen. in worship today we take time to pray in worship today we take time to give thanks all right. and praise mm -hmm. and we take time to listen mm -hmm. for the Spirit of God mm -hmm. there's an Old Testament passage of Scripture that sometimes I've resonated with sometimes it just didn't feel like it was 
hitting with me for some reason. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray yes. and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Maybe the one, maybe one of the reasons at times this hasn't resonated with me because sometimes it feels like if we just say, oh, we just need to pray. <laughs> we just need to do this. When sometimes we're also called to act and to be and to be present. But also we know that this passage of scripture has been used in our community sometimes to condemn us. All, right. All of us stand in the need of God's grace and mercy. Someone once said that the cross is the great leveling ground. No one better, no one worse. All come in need of God's grace and mercy. And yet we know in this land that some folks have not been treated equally. Some voices, some folks' voices have not been heard. And yet that's what resonates with me today is that we do need, as a country, as a people, we all need to look at ourselves and say, oh my, who is it that I have not heard? Who is it that I have not listened to? Who is it that perhaps I have not seen? Maybe just beside of me or down the street or maybe someone that I don't even know. Mm -hmm. This morning as we begin our prayer time, may it begin in silence as we just listen, but we know that we cannot be silent forever because silence can mean it's harmful and it's violence. Mm -hmm. In this moment, may the silence of our hearts hear God's voice speaking to us, no matter who we are and how we identify. Father God, we come to you in this uh, continued prayer for the nurses in Bakwood, Father God, and just to find a way to um, heal this pandemic, Father God, and also heal our land and heal our souls, heal our spiritual, in Jesus' name we pray. Dear God, please uh, continue to bless our military forces, the men and women, the contractors, and civilian workforce. And then God, again, I ask a blessing to those who make decisions for our military forces. Uh, keep them safe, and, uh, and, and God, as we go through this time, as we are eventually being asked to do some uh, things we haven't historically done, God, I ask again that you, you continue to work in the hearts of men and women who would send the military forces, uh, that you are there in the midst of that decision making, and, uh, and, and your grace and your mercy is what prevails in this war. Most gracious God, we do indeed offer our thanks today. We offer our thanks today for what you've given us. God, I ask prayer today for those individuals who are at home, who are scared, who are not sure what the future may hold. God, I just ask that you wrap your arms around them, God, that you give them comfort, that you allow them to know that your love, God, and God, allow us to shine your love through them, God, and let them to see your love through us. Continue to walk with all of the ones who are feeling lonely, who are sad, and depressed, God, I just ask that you walk with them, God, let them know how much they are loved, how much you love them. And dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you this morning for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love, your compassion, and your kindness. God, we thank you because you are God and there's no one that sit beside you. You sit alone. No one can do what you can do. Now, Father, you know what state our country is in right now. Father, I'd like to lift up our president to you, that you would open up his eyes, that you would open up his understanding, that he may see clearly what the message is, Lord. Now, God, even as Mark spoke, as Pastor Mark spoke, God, we humble ourselves as a country that if we've done anything that displeases you, we ask that you would forgive us. God, that you would unite us, that you would make us one in the unity of the spirit of the country and the spirit of you, Lord. God, we just thank you. We expect you to do great things through, even through the storm, Lord. In Jesus' name, we praise you for these things. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, God present with us, God before us, beside of us, and leading us forward. God of many names, of creator, of father, of mother, of Holy Spirit, sustainer, savior, Messiah, 
so many names, so many people, and yet you hold us all. As you hear us, hear our hearts, and heal our hearts and minds and souls to the depth of our souls, from the tip of our toes to the top of our head, and all that's in between, heal us as we confess those things that aren't pleasing to you. Fill us of racism and prejudice and bias and, and phobias of all kinds. In this day, hear our prayers, O oh Lord, as we confess to you, as we come to you and praise you for all that you are, and as we try with your Holy Spirit touching each of us to live into what you intend for each of us to be and how we need to treat each other. We praise you and thank you because you indeed are our healer. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. 
And now there was in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes ahead of me. And then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured, he picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jewish leader said to the man who had been healed, It's the Sabbath, the law forbids, for, forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, the man who made me well said to me, pick up your mat and walk. Yeah. So they asked him, who is this fellow who told you to pick up and walk? <laughs> the man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, see, you're well again. Stop sinning and, or something might else might happen to you. The man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well. Fast forward to a time when Jesus has ascended to heaven, and it is the presence of God through the Holy Spirit that is leading the disciples. Peter and John were going up to the temple, we find in, in Acts, at the time of prayer, at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from, from those who were going to the temple court. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked for them, asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him and, and as did John. And then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from him. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Hmm. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. And then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. And when all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in a place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us if by our own power or godliness that we have made this man walk? By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can see. May God bless this reading and the hearing of the Holy Scripture. Oh 
Yes, even in these troubled times, God is present with us. And yes, our mind wanders as that song was going through. John, you were talking before we started worship about how this song was often sung as Harriet Tugman led folks to, to freedom and healed in many ways, not just physically, but spiritually and emotionally in our lives. And it's often the case that we are celebrating and we're grieving and we are hurting and crying with tears of joy and sadness all at the same time. Julie, we are with you and your family as your mother passed yesterday, so we hold that near and dear in our hearts. And yet others, uh, Charlie, as I'm listening to you sing that part of the song that said, Well, I looked over yonder, and what did I see? It reminded me when my daughter, who had a birthday, and I'm going to break my own rule here. She had a birthday, I'm going to tell you how she was. But when she was a baby, I used to say, Well, I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? But a big old dirty diaper coming after me. <laughs> Somehow in the mix of tears of pain and of heartache and of joy, and who would have ever imagined that we get to a point in our lives that we'd want to see a dirty diaper or a binky again. <laughs> but when our kids grow up, and no, I'm not ready for grandkids, but we miss that part. And not yet God has a way of holding us, holding us and reminding us that no matter all those emotions, I'm still the God that heals you physically. I'm still the God that heals you emotionally and spiritually. And I, my arms and hands are big enough to hold it all. Oh God, we praise you as we offer ourselves as living sacrifices, as part of our worship and service today. Because you have offered so much to us. You bless us in ways, even in these times, times that perhaps we don't even realize the small things, the small things in life that we should. So we pause today just for a moment of silence just to say thank you, God. Thank you for the gift of love and of life and reminding us of what really is important in life. And as we receive, as we give back to you and to each other, may you find us faithful as we offer to you a small token of what you have blessed us with materially and financially. May we find your spirit or may your spirit find us in ways that help us to have the stick with it is to continue to want to make a difference in your name and in your spirit because so many have reflected your love into our lives as we feel it directly from you and from each other. In a heart of gratitude with attitudes that sometimes need adjusting, we come to you today, oh God. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. I invite you to give as you're able to give, and thank you again for your generosity. And you can do that in a number of ways. You can go to our website, newlifemcc.net, and click on the giving tab. It'll pop down, and click on it again. It'll take you to our giving platform, and a number of you are continuing to do that. Some of you are writing checks and putting it in the regular mail. That's great, too, or you can drop it in our church mailbox. But thank you as you continue to make it possible for us to be what we're called to be at New Life MCC. I invite you to give now as God's Spirit leads you to give.
us for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Praise be the Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. Most gracious God, we do indeed offer our thanks today for the gifts that allow you. our church to use them to better glorify you, God. And I only yes. sing in your son's name. Amen. 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 musicians come down, I want to thank them again for, Charlie, you said something this morning that did resonate with me too. You said uh, sometimes we get so focused on how we have to be our focused attention on all the technical aspects, sometimes it's hard to feel like we're just having church. But when the Holy Spirit is in our presence and mix, what was it Robert Luce Stevens said, that he gives us a time and an opportunity to say, I have been to church and I am not depraved. Yes. Sometimes we face even depression can be a serious thing with folks, and we don't want to make light of that at all. But God's Spirit finds us no matter the condition that we're in and provides for us in that time so that we can grow strong. Yes, we look different up here on Sunday morning. It feels different, but it feels different on the outside, not necessarily on the inside. Somebody last week said I look like with this uh, head, what well, looks like a headband that I was channeling Richard Simmons. <laughs> I promise you I will not wear the attire that I have seen Richard Simmons wear in the past. I'm not that there's anything wrong with it, but I'm not sure you'd like to see me on Sunday morning in there. Amen. Somebody else said, oh, it looks like a Star Wars thing. Yes, the force be with us, but it's the Holy Spirit that is our force, and we're trying in our best to be as safe as possible. Uh, for our worship team here as we continue to social distance, as we continue just to remember that our enemy, the coronavirus, is still prowling around out there, and we all have to be careful. And we pray every day, all of us, uh, for your safety, no matter who you are, where you come from, or how you self-identify. Know if you're connecting with us, we're holding you in our heart today. Well, I mentioned my daughter a few minutes ago, and I'm going to mention not my daughter, but now I'm going to mention my mom. When I was a small child, my mom used to say things, and my granny did too, and in our family, that if you had a bump or a boo-boo or a bruise, you know what we said to make it better? Kiss it and make it better. <laughs> How many of you didn't grow up with that? Oh, some of you said the same thing. Oh, good. I don't feel so, so alone or unique in that regard. So one day, Mom took me to the doctor. I don't know if I was sick or just needed a checkup, and um, I guess I needed uh, a shot, an injection, you know where. Well, Mom tells the story even to this day that as she carried me, and I was probably, I don't know, one, two years old, I was talking enough to say, Mama, Mama, kiss my bottom, kiss my bottom, kiss my bottom. Because <laughs> that's what we said, kiss it to make it better. Right. Right. Today, in all that ails and all that hurts us. Don't we wish that someone could just kiss it and make it better? Mm. Oh, we wish our soul cries out that that could be the case. And how many times have you heard me? I've even said it today already that we need healing physically, emotionally, and spiritually in our lives. Sometimes all three because they're not in isolation. We are whole people or called to be whole people. Repeatedly, you've heard me say that I love this image of Jesus fishing with a net, not a hook, because he was interested in the whole person. Mark Twain once said that the physician who knows only medicine doesn't even know medicine. Now, there are a couple ways you could take that. Again, from that holistic approach that it's not just about the physical body, but the spiritual and emotional body as well. But I think he might have also been talking about those of us who, whether you're a medical doctor or a, a psychiatrist or in the spiritual healing business, 
to make sure that we take good self-care and heal ourselves. Not that we can heal ourselves, but that we take attention or pay attention to how we are being healing and the areas of our lives that need healing perhaps just as much as those to whom we seek to heal. Amen. <laughs> Jesus clearly understood, I think, his role as healer. The Old Testament scripture from Isaiah says something that Jesus, when he picked up the scroll in Luke chapter 4, Jesus echoed. And I love that early chat, those early parts of Luke's gospel because you see the, the thread as we celebrate Trinity Sunday, as we celebrate this first Sunday after Pentecost, and the power and the presence of God through the Holy Spirit. Look back to Acts chapter, or Acts in those first few chapters up through four, and you'll see the Holy Spirit just threaded through there. Even in those times when Jesus was looking to that Old Testament scripture that said, The Lord's Spirit is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release for the captives and liberation for prisoners. He echoed that in Luke's gospel, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus reading this when he went back to his hometown and picked up the scroll in the synagogue and he read the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free. Jesus, I believe, did understand what it meant to be a healer. But yet, and some people might really take issue with what I'm about to say. I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again. I'm not so sure that either Jesus, because we, I think we sometimes, we can handle the fact sometimes that Jesus is the Son of God and divine, perhaps more than we can handle the fact that Jesus was also human. Right. Mm -hmm. And maybe in his humanity, Jesus either recognized or allowed himself to be challenged as a healer. And you know where I'm going with this. I'm going to that passage in a couple of the Gospels where the Syrophoenician woman, the Canaanite woman, had a need because her daughter was ill. And she came to Jesus. I'm reading from Matthew's Gospel that leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and a Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terror. Jesus didn't answer a word. Was Jesus silent in that moment? But watch what happens. Jesus did not remain silent. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I'm sent to only the lost sheep of Israel. Jesus is saying the politically correct, religiously correct verse of his time. The woman came and knelt down before him, Lord, help me, she begged. He replied, it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Because even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table. My friends, i got to tell you, I feel like that in that moment, this God used this Syrophoenician woman, this Canaanite woman that Jesus wasn't even supposed to be talking to her, right. to challenge the cultural bias and prejudice that Jesus perhaps grew up with in his day. And I think Jesus knew it. I think the light bulb came on. I think he said, you know what? You're exactly right. And he said, because of your faith. Your daughter is already healed. May we hear these words. And if Jesus had that need for that recognition to break away from his cultural bias and prejudices and racism and all that, my goodness, do we not as well? Do we not as well? Now, Jesus sent his disciples on two different occasions out on a mission to teach and to heal and in very different ways. The first time he said, don't take anything with you. The second time he said, now be wise. It's dangerous out there. But he sent those early disciples, and they could hardly believe the power that they had because they were following Jesus and because Jesus' presence wasn't only behind them, beside of them, but also ahead of where they were going. And they taught and they healed, and they did all these wonderful miracles as well. Now, Peter and John, if you get now to Acts, Jesus is no longer physically present with but that same calling, that same mission that Jesus had sent them out on was still there. All right. And they were about 
and found themselves in situations and circumstances that needed healing. I'm about to ask you and to ask myself as we ask each of ourselves today, how do we consider, how do we live into that role and calling to be healers for our day and our time as well? Are we called still in the name of Christ to be a healing presence with our words, with our actions, not remaining silent, but being present with others? It was St. Francis of Assisi who said, We have been called to heal wounds, to unite what has fallen apart, and to bring home those who have lost their way. My friends, if we are to fully live into this calling, we must also first and acknowledge and ask, What is it for what we too as individuals need healing? Jesus asked the man at the pool, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? Mm -hmm. Ask yourself that question, not pointing at anybody well, else. Take the, the splinter out of, well, before you take the splinter out of someone else's eye, take the log out of yours. <laughs> do you want to be healed? Perhaps we shouldn't look at these stories just literally and from one perspective. The man's response Others keep getting in front of me. Others are, there's no one there to take me down there. No one's able to help me into the pool. Say that. And you know what Jesus said? <laughs> Jesus said, well, enough of that. <laughs> Jesus said, pick up your mat and walk. Amen. <laughs> Let's move it out of that context into today. Pick up your mat and walk. Walk the streets of Minneapolis. Walk the streets of D.C. or Norfolk or Virginia Beach or Mary, North Carolina or Winston-Salem or Tallahassee, just tell the places I've been. <laughs> Wherever we are, pick up our mat and walk into the healing presence that God is calling us to walk. But there will be some who say, oh, you can't do that because it's the Sabbath. Dr. James Ford, who was a veteran of the lunch counter protest. I think he came out of North Carolina. He also came to Virginia and was a pastor, I think, in Richmond before he went on to be pastor of the famed Riverside Church in New York. But he spoke to us at the MCC General Conference a few years back, the same summer that marriage equality was coming in, the same time that voting rights were being gutted. And he said to us, he said, you folks in MCC need to understand that even as we celebrate that there will always be a backlash. My friends, perhaps we will continue to see that backlash. It doesn't mean that we are called any less to be who we are called to be. Now, I, I love Dr. Forbes. I haven't always been as, been as fond of Bishop T.D. Jakes, but he said some things this week that really resonated with me. He said, we are in a threefold pandemic. Physiologically, economically, and sociologically. That's true, if you think about it. He went on to say that he was a committed follower of Jesus, and yet it still, he had issues because he said to see the image of the president standing in front of a Christian church holding a Bible he said, what did that have to say about the unity of our nation to our Jewish and our Muslim brothers and sisters and people of other faiths? Bishop Jakes went on to say, too, in another interview, he said, we aren't asking not to be arrested. If somebody does something wrong, Yes, that's, we're not asking not to be arrested. We are asking for equal opportunity for our families, to protect our families. We're asking for equal employment and pay and acceptance and inclusion in our society. And I'm paraphrasing him. But then he said this, but we are asking not to be tried on the streets. I thought that was very, very powerful. My friends, if we are to get beyond denial, and to get to hope and healing and wholeness. I believe we have to live into our roles and responsibility of being called to be both healed and healers 
in this current time. You know, even Peter later on found himself having to be called out. You know, he went somewhere and, and Paul was there and, and Peter had a tendency in that moment to only relate to and, and to associate with and to, to eat with the folks who were Jewish, not the Gentiles. Remember that part? And, and he got had to be called out. Each of us may need to be called out sometimes. We may not understand in our white skin or whatever skin we have the racisms or the bias or the prejudices that maybe we've grown up with. Maybe we thought because Grandma said it was okay. Maybe we need to be listening to God. All right. A friend of mine that I grew up with and didn't even know that he was out until Facebook. Isn't it amazing how much we're all out on Facebook growing up? <laughs> he posted something that I really, really hit me too. It said, she said, here's an example of how white privilege sounds. You, we keep saying sometimes it's horrible that an innocent black man was killed, but destroying property has to stop. Now, don't you think about how that comes across? Perhaps we could get out of our white privilege and say it this way it's horrible that property's being destroyed, but killing innocent black men has to stop. Yeah. Just changing the priorities of that. In response to all lives matter, some people have been saying that, reappropriating black lives matters around, and, and white privilege and all of that. Another one of my, our colleagues in ministry at MCC had posted something on one of our web pages using that story of the, the prodigal son. Prodigal child, if you will. Doesn't matter if it's male or female. Right. And the story that he told had the parent standing there with the sign that read, hashtag, prodigal children matter. Now, you remember the story of the prodigal right, son, right? right. And remember the, the son comes back, and when the son comes back, it's the older child right. that has the issues. Right. When the uh, older child stayed at home and had been the good older child, saw all this hubbub that was going on about the son that was lost or the child that was lost coming home, and so he's all angry and upset and frustrated. And so he writes, he puts a sign and says, all children matter. The parent looks over and says, dude, it ain't about you right now. <laughs> Do we hear that? Yeah. Do we hear that? Yeah. Will we live this? Now, you can blame this one on Reverend Terry Steed down in um, Orlando if you don't like it, what I'm about to say, because I stole it from Terry's Facebook page. She stole it from somebody else. <laughs> Here's another quote that I want you to think carefully about. Some of y'all Christians are out there hollering all lives matter. But disown your homosexual children and oh. keep the family race rapists the secret. Oh, oh, oh. Take several seats. <laughs> Black lives matter. Black LGBTQAI plus lives matter. Boy, don't that call us out. In this time of celebrating the Trinity Sunday, when the Holy Spirit is present in my life and yours, in this time of worship that we celebrate the first Sunday after Pentecost, in this Sunday that we celebrate the first Sunday of Pride Tide in our community, I have said at times that if we think we've been healed, talking about our LGBTQAI community, if we think we've been healed, from or delivered from or whatever word that folks want to use, delivered out of Exodus movement and all those ex gay kind of things, if we think we have been healed from our LGBTQAI plusness, maybe we weren't LGBTQAI plusness to begin with. But if you have discovered, accepted, affirmed, and live as you are, no matter who you are, no matter how you self-identify in your LGBTQAI plus element of penis, if we are living as we are called and intended to be, we are on our way perhaps to wholeness, and my friends, I find hope in that. Right. I read a book one time that was entitled, Now That You're Out of the Closet, What Are You Gonna Do With the Rest of the House? <laughs> There's a lesson there for all of us in that. 
I tell you what we're going to do in this church house, and I'm going to quote Reverend Elder Frieda Smith. You know, the Voting Rights Act passed, what, 20, 100 years ago. It was passed in, 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 in what, 19, no, whatever it was, 1919, I guess, what it was? That's 100 years ago. That was 101 years ago. It passed Congress, but the next year it had to be ratified by all the states. So 100 years ago, Reverend Elder Frieda Smith was a pioneer she passed this year, and she was a pioneer in holding us and holding us accountable, calling us out at times. And I think her words, and you've heard me say this before, there's a banner in there for you. We're even working on a song to sing this song. And I tell you, my friends, now that we're out of the closet, what are we going to do with the rest of the house? This is what this church house is going to do. This church is going to stand up, speak up. This church is never going to shut up. Never going to let up, never going to give up, never going to give out, never going to wear out, never going to burn out. This church is going to win out, reach out to everyone who's been left out. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right indeed, O oh Lord, to give you thanks and praise. And so we lift our voices with all the saints and angels and proclaim your glory and unending praise as we praise together, saying, Holy, 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 Holy. Most gracious and merciful God, creator of us all, and yet you find us in our uniqueness, you find us in the color of our skin, you find us in the depth of our souls where your spirit touches our spirit. You bring about transformation into our lives. We claim that transformation as we come humbly to the table, confessing all that is within us, all that we bring, all those things that are not pleasing to you. And we also claim and, and profess you as Lord, as Lord of all, and as we come to you asking that your spirit would help transform us and heal us and forgive us from all that, we know that your forgiveness and mercy and grace covers all. As you pour out your spirit upon us and in and through these gifts today, may we be reminded and live into all that you are calling us to be in love and hope and joy and peace, not only from ourselves, but as we give love and praise back to you, but also to each other. In Jesus' holy and precious name, we ask these things, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Jesus took the bread from the Passover table and blessed it and broke it and said, This is my body. Literally translated, it means this is my body opened to you. As often as you receive it, you receive me. I love that image of a God that created each of us uniquely, no matter who we are. Open arms. You could come to in the same way, Jesus took the cup and poured the cup and blessed it and said, this is the new covenant for the forgiveness of sins. It is for you and for you and for you and for you. It's not just for a few, but it is for all of you. No matter where you are today or who you're with, would you say it is for me too? It is, it is for, for me too. too. Come on, say it like you mean it. It, it is, is for me too. too. Come on, say it like you feel it. It, it is for me too. too. Come on, like the man who was healed of oh. whatever the ailment was. You wanted to get up and take up your mat and walk. Say, it is for me too. It is for me too. And now you can look to someone across the room or across your social distance or if you're a family member at home or you can type on Facebook or send them a tweet or a Twitter or a text, whatever it is, and say, it is for you too. God's it grace is for you too. too. And let's be just as excited about that as we are about receiving it ourselves. It is for you, too. It is for you, too. It is indeed, my friends, for you, too. In just a moment, I'm going to invite our worship team back around the table as they also sing. But if you'd like to join us for this table of grace, it's not about being a member of this church or of any church, really. It's about celebrating God's love for you. Right. As God finds you and right. takes you where God wants us right. to be. Because God is behind us, beside of us, yeah. and ahead of us yeah. in this journey. Yeah. So go find a really cracker is. or a cookie, a cup of juice, a cup of wine, whatever it is. And share with us and claim God's presence and promise for us this day. And all God's people said.
My friends, I invite you to come. Now I invite you, no matter if you're alone or if you're with someone or wherever you are, to sing the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray.
closing song today. Nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. It's a lot of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. 